Hi! Today we're going to be painting roses. Um, if you can hear a little pitter-patter outside, it's because it's raining and I'm right by a window. My desk is by a window, so if you hear some of that, then you'll know what it is. Um, today I have toned my paper with sort of a periwinkle color. Um, I thought that would contrast really nicely with um, some pink and some yellow roses. I think I want to have some yellow. We'll see. And there's so many varieties of roses. Um, the ones I'm going to be painting are English roses, and I'm going to focus on the ones that are just really kind of tightly bunched. Um, there are some really beautiful ones that almost have like a star shape, or I don't know exactly how to describe it, but like they almost look like they have a little looped shape inside where their petals are all nested in this neat kind of daisy shape. Um, I thought that's a little bit more advanced, and so I'm going to start out with a simpler rose shape, just kind of the classic, all the petals are nested in a, in a circular shape. Um, so we're starting out with uh, titanium white, we've got cadmium yellow, magenta, cadmium red, phthalo green, and yellow ochre. And I'm going to make a pink to start out, and I might add a hint of yellow, I, I don't know, I think we'll play it, play it by ear. If I like the way just varieties of pink are looking, then I'll probably just skip um, skip doing yellow roses, but we'll see. I'm gonna use a little bit of my red and my pink. I like that warmer sort of a pink that it makes. And we'll start with that. And I think I'm gonna stick with my small brush for most of this painting so that I can get the smaller shapes that we need for the petals, like the kind of fine lines. But maybe for some, a few of the outer petals, Eh, if I load up this brush, it makes pretty large strokes, pretty wide strokes, so I think we'll just use that for any of the petals that are bigger on the outsides. Okay, I think, I think I'm going to start with my center sort of um, focal point rose that's sort of on the top um, that everything else is going to be overlapping behind or underlapping <laughs> um, right here. So... What I like to do is just start with some small little strokes and just sort of build them up like this. And then I just get a little bit wider each time and sort of nest them. And these, these particular ones are um, very tightly bunched. So the petals are definitely a lot, um, there's a lot more of them packed towards the center than some other um, varieties of roses. And so um, I'm gonna try to keep these pretty thin and we'll, we'll come back and of course detail them. Okay, if I think that's sort of like the beginning of my rose and I'm gonna build it out even more, I need to stop there so that I don't um, get too far and then go, oh no, it's going to have to be huge to add some bigger petals. So I'll start adding just some wider ones and I just make slightly bigger strokes and wider strokes. And they don't all have to go perfectly like in line. Some of them can kind of go underneath other ones. I think the last few I want to be pretty large because at the very outside edge, the last few petals kind of fall open in some of the reference photos that I'm seeing, and I think that's really pretty, so I'm going to kind of go for that look. There. Let's start with that. I think I like that. I think I'll just use the space color for my next rose and then, um, well, you know what, I don't have enough, so I'll go ahead and mix a new, a new batch. And especially with um, roses, I find you're doing so many strokes and you want the strokes each to have a good amount of paint in them, so I try to make uh, more paint than I think I'll need just because it... Um, I usually end up using it up, so 
that I want to go for a little darker because I know we're going, I want this to be a medium color. You know what? I think it'd be pretty for this one to be a darker, just even darker than this existing one. Throw in a bit of variety because as I was looking, there's, you know, a rose bush only has one variety of roses growing on it, I think, generally, <laughs> unless you make some weird hybrid. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. So we're, um, I'm, I think it'd be pretty to have a couple nestled together, maybe more like a bouquet with a little bit of variety. So that's not just same, 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 same. Okay. So now this one, I think I'm going to try to have it um, facing, like having the face of the rose look a little bit more over there. So I'm going to think about that as I um, nest my strokes together and maybe try to have... Um, you know, more of them on this side to kind of help it look like it's, you know, facing that way. I have to remember to keep my strokes a little bit thinner for this, for this type. And when we come back for the details, we can definitely add thinner strokes along the edges of the petals too, and that will help give it that, that really tightly bundled feel. Okay, I think it's probably time for some of the bigger petals now. Maybe a few medium-sized ones. There, and then we'll have a couple of the bigger, bigger ones. And I think that's really pretty. And you know what the outside, I was just noticing the outside edges of these um, almost have a little bit more of a ruffly texture to them, which I think is neat. So let's do, let's do that. I think we'll have one more kind of underneath there and there. And we're going to have to help this look like it's on top still. And that'll get clearer as we add the highlights. I think I want to do that with this. I'll go ahead and just use this color on it. It's not a big deal. But maybe make the petals have a little bit of a wavy feel to them. Then um, get that unique sort of flare. There. Okay. Um, I think I'll add... Let's see what adding red... And we'll just add some more red and magenta. And we'll just do a darker, slightly darker one. I think I want to leave a bit of a space there and maybe have another one up here. Yeah, I'm just looking at my references to see if I have any ideas for composition. I think I'll do one there and maybe a hint of another one and see how that looks. And this one I think I want to have come out from behind. So if I make my center here, it'll, you know, as it extends down, it'll go behind this one. And I like that overlapping idea. Oops. And to have it have more of a look like we're looking, viewing it from the side of the flower rather than like down at the center of it, we'll do less up top and then more, more kind of branching out here so that it looks like we're seeing more from the side. We can even have some sort of going like that. Mm. Let me look, they kind of have um, some petals that kind of are opening up a bit. I feel like that one got a little crazy, but that's okay. We'll clarify it. We'll get more details. And I kind of like the loose kind of fluffy look it has. 
Um, I'll, I'll use this dark color down here. So I think, let's see what other ideas. I think um, it might be kind of fun to have a bud right here. And um, we can just have a couple little, little um, grouping of the petals here. We don't want to do too many to help it look like it's more tightly closed up there. And then there's just a few that sort of open up slightly around the sides. They're almost. Like that. And then maybe I'll have one that kind of goes in the front a little bit. There, I think I'll keep it, keep it small. Um, let's see, so we've got four. Um, you know what, I think some leaves will help balance it out and kind of create an odd, um, an odd number of, you know, elements in the piece. So we'll have one, two, three, four, and then five, like a, a grouping of leaves here. And we can even add a few petals here and there. That might be pretty when I come to more of the highlight color kind of hinting at other ones behind if we think it needs more, but I think that looks really pleasing the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just leave it there. Okay, so now I'm going to create a highlight color. So we're gonna bring some white over here and I'll just change the color that I had on my palette. And let's see. That, that looks like it would be a good highlight color for these ones, but this one, maybe I would go a little lighter with it. So um, let's try it out on some of these. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to help it flow since we're trying to get slight, slightly more detailed here. Let's try it on this medium color one. So when I'm doing highlights on the petals, I like to just choose a side of each petal to add this um, lighter color to. So I'm gonna add it to the outer edge of each one. And I can kind of paint over some of that blue that's peeking through the periwinkle color. Um, if some still shows through, I think that's fine. I like that, that sort of a... Um, look when the background isn't completely covered up because it's just as um helps it look more fun and expressive so I'm a fan of that and we'll have a little some little folded over petals there We don't have to do it exactly the same on every single petal. It can be a little different looking on some or maybe broken into like two strokes just to add variety so it's not the same all over the place. And this turned out as a much more peachy color than I, I guess I was expecting, but I like that. I'm gonna run with it. And these outer petals I'm noticing are much lighter and have less dark showing on them on in my reference photos. So we'll make them a little larger or a little bit more of the, the highlight color. And I'm using photos just to kind of get an idea of positions that the blooms can take, some of their colors, but I'm not copying the composition or like any one flower specifically from it. I'm just getting ideas and then kind of running with it on my own. So I'd suggest that too if you want to find um, some reference photos so you actually know um, what you're painting <laughs> and seeing like how I'm interpreting that in this piece. I just pulled them off of Pinterest. There we go. Okay, so some of the blue is still showing. Um, we're gonna also come back with some darker, like more shadowy kind of colors, and that'll also cover up the blue a little bit. 
Okay, let's let's make a color for this one because this is almost out. So we're gonna make a highlight color and add a bunch of white. I think I think I'm gonna have this be a little bit more on the magenta side. Tinge it a little bit and see. That's nice. Let's try that. And especially on these roses, it's a lot of repetitious sort of things because they have so many petals. So you can kind of just get lost in the um, you know, sort of relaxing, just doing your little strokes. <laughs> This is nice. This is giving them a slightly different look where um, this one's highlight color is quite a bit lighter. So we're not um, having it look super the same. I like that variety. There. Okay. Let's do highlight color for this one. I'm going to come over here and maybe try only, really only magenta in the color. And it's a much cooler of a pink color, so I think that might be kind of a nice contrast with how um, reddish that is. I think I need some more magenta, and I'm running out of white, so let's go ahead and just put out some new paint, and we won't have to worry about it for a little while. I knew I was going to use lots of white because these pinks take lots of white and um, there's just lots of pink in these and I knew we were all going to do all the highlights and everything using white. All right, so here is a magenta. I'll hold it up. That's nice. Let's give that a try. Actually, I feel like when it dries, it's going to almost be as dark because um, acrylics dry a shade or two darker than how they look when they're wet. So you always have to watch out for that if it's really close and you want there to be more of a value difference between the color you have on your brush and, you know, something you're trying to contrast with. Um, be aware of that because that can be frustrating where you spend a lot of time painting something that you really want to stand out. But then when it dries, you're like, oh my gosh, it blends totally in because the values are so similar. So um, yeah, that is, that's something that I had to learn. I think I want another one up there. That helps it feel a little bit more balanced, I think. sure quite what's happening here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just make that one smooth it out a little bit like that and we'll just have one big petal sort of showing. Um, there. I think that works. Okay and I'll go ahead and use this on this one down here, the little bud, because that is the same sort of color, the, the base color that we were using. Just looking to see where some of the highlights fall on a bud. I like the tips. There we go. There we go. 
we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so now these are kind of um, a little lower contrast. Um, they're kind of a, just hanging out in the medium and light range. So now I'm gonna bring in a dark color and kind of get more of the um, the shadows in the, the kind of the deep cracks of the, the roses where the petals are really bunched together. So because this one's the darkest one, I'm just gonna start on it um, to kind of experiment and see what, you know, method I like using this, just the pure magenta. And I think that'll work pretty well because um, it's already a pretty dark flower. So let's give that a try. And I want them to have a really kind of um, intensity to the shadows. Um, I think that how tightly packed the petals are um, in English roses is really beautiful. And I want to try to get that where they're just like really lots of little petals all nestled in there. And I might stroke this like over the edges of some of the highlights. And I like how the colors mix. So let's just embrace that. And we're just going to go for it and see how that goes. And see, that makes it um, has so much more depth already because of that darker color. And I think in the center, I'm going to have these darker details closer together and more of them. And then maybe as we travel out, there's going to be less and less as the petals like are opening and spreading away from each other. I think I'll almost kind of go over some of the highlights and replace them with like a little swipe of shadow to have that really really deep sort of a look. Yeah, that's fun. And then, um, tattered a little bit here and there. Maybe I'll just blend it a little bit into this petal since it's still wet. I feel like that went a little weird. <laughs> Let's fix that one. There we go. I don't think it needs to be that dark so I'll just blend it in a little bit and then add the dark. I think the dark was hanging out too close to like the edge, the outer edge. There. Okay so I'm gonna repeat that sort of idea and work on these and um, maybe with just a lighter, a lighter version of this. I think I'll go more orange, um, not exactly orangey but more of the red in my mixture, and I'll add just a little bit of white. And that looks pretty good. I think I'll use it for this one, actually. Okay. So I might just go around and, and narrow those highlights a little bit to help it be much more dense looking.
There we go. I don't think it needs to go out any further there. And so then we'll just give it a little hint here. There. And I feel like I want maybe a little bit of a color variation. I don't know. It's, um, I get, I guess my eyes get bored with the same, the same thing going on, like over an entire flower. So I might, I might try maybe having a more magenta sort of a shadow here and there. Let's just give it a try. See if I like it. I kind of touch it there. And I don't know if it's going to come through in the video, um, how, how great the light is to see that slight difference. But having a little bit of a touch of a different sort of a dark pink, that's pretty much the same value as um, the shadow color I was using, but it's just a little bit of a different temperature um, where it's like a cooler type of pink versus a warmer one. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we're going to just leave that one there. I think that really gave it a, some, something a little bit different. Now I was noticing um, some, some roses, once they open all the way up, they have this yellow center and I decided not to do that in mine. Um, but you could definitely add, some of my reference photos I'm looking at right now have um, their, the roses little yellow um, centers and that is really fun. So if you feel like doing that, then that is totally fine. You can add some like little yellow dots and details but I'm just going to keep going with my closed center since I kind of built the flowers that way. Okay, so this one, I, I, oh, I need more magenta already. We're using so much pink. And it's getting like, oh, so much pink. And so it'll be nice to have, um, whoops, it'll be nice to have the green added in there. And I might even come back and like hint, hint at a little bit more of a peachy yellowy kind of a thing near the edges of some of the open petals um because I think as they um as the petals open they sort of fade and they get a little bit of a tinge of a different color to them and I think that would be kind of fun okay so we'll go ahead and add these darker shadow areas to this one Okay. I do a little bit there, like that. I just looked up and I was like, oh, this one is still <laughs> a little bit weird looking. So there, that fixed it. Okay, so now I think I'll go ahead and do, yeah, the shadows on this one. The little bud. I want that dark to be right in there. And kind of deep, deep in that little place where the two petals come together. And you could add just a little bit of a shadow kind of under those, maybe a little bit there. There. We won't overwork that one. I kind of like how it's a little bit more of a gestural, a gestural shape. 
Okay, so now let's think. I think I'll go ahead and add that little bit of, maybe a little bit of a uh, peachy yellowy sort of a thing near the edges. Maybe I'll just do it on one and see, and kind of the, the focal point one. I feel like also this, this um, darker rose kind of started overlapping over it and I want to push this one to the forefront again. So I'm going to put a bit more of a highlight right there. There, okay. So let's make, I don't know, let's see. Like this has some pink on it already, sort of our, our red and magenta mixture. And maybe I'll just add a little bit of yellow. I don't want it to be too extreme, so let's pull in some more of the pink. And just, I like that little bit of a, of a yellowy feel. So I'm going to just add that on some of these outer ones. Ooh, I think that's really nice. See, that makes it pop. And I think it's because it's a lighter color too. Um, and so it's, it's also kind of adding an extra, an extra light value. There we go. An extra light highlight. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm just going to keep adding it and I don't have to do, you don't have to trace every single petal all the way around. You can kind of, um, add a little dashes, which I think, um, is nice there. And we'll go scoop. There we go. And we'll, um, I decide how close to the center I want to go with this. I think, I don't think I want to go all the way. I want to leave this more, uh, a little bit more toward the outside. So I'll add a bit more here and maybe a few of these upper ones, maybe one to just be even with that over there. 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 Oops. That one went a little off the edge. I really like that. I think that really makes it pop and I kind of want to do a similar thing. Maybe not, maybe not a yellow because I think having just one have more of that yellowish tinge is kind of nice. And then I'm going to go for more of a magenta because I love white with just plain magenta. It just makes this really nice, cool, cool pink. And if you have um, a, a, like a lot of white and a little bit of the magenta, it makes this really beautiful, light, light, light pink color. So let's give that a try. I think that would be kind of nice. So I'll start on the outsides, the outer petals, and just work inwards a little bit. And again, I probably won't bring it all the way to the center, but let's give it a try. And this one will kind of try to keep it on the more ruffly Roughly edge side. Whoops, ah, oh, it touched the wrong one. <laughs> Keep wanting my faint hand to go right there. Maybe I'll make some of these strokes a little wider, make those lighter petals since they're at the outer edge. I think they must get like faded by the sun or something like that. Maybe just like a few scattered a little closer. There. Okay. I think I like that. Yeah, that one has a nice fluffy, a fluffy feel. Okay, and then for this one. I think I want to go for a lighter value, kind of like this one with more contrast. Um, 
we'll just do the magenta again, I think. And just uh, actually, oops, I touched my red. Let's get that off. Just more white, less pink. Just go for something higher contrast and let's see what that looks like. I might end up having it read as like a more white sort of a rose, maybe. We'll see. I like that. make this one a little bigger since it's one of the kind of lower larger petals there yeah I like how that's looking how it just has turned that lower edge a lot lighter which I think is really pretty so then I'll do that same thing a little bit more up here Bring this a little closer to the center, actually, because I think that'll kind of make it make it pop a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like the dark is kind of in a weird shape. I don't know exactly how to describe what shape I like to have in the centers, but I just sort of fiddle with it until it looks right to me. Um, some somehow the way they nest sometimes they look right and sometimes they don't so let's see oh, that even feels better yeah that looks looks more what i was hoping for okay Now the little rose, I think it could use a highlight color too. It looks a little forlorn, <laughs> well, less developed than everything else. And so we're going to just do that same highlight with that one. And then hopefully we'll be ready for our leaves. Um, okay, let me look at my photo reference because I haven't painted buds nearly as much as I've painted other roses. I think that's a little too dark, like more full roses. So I want to make sure I'm actually putting the highlights where it makes sense. These little, whoops, and then that went too dark. Have to find an in-between. Hmm, that's a little strange. There, that might even work better. Mm, I think I still want it to be a little lighter. Maybe that first, <laughs> the first color I had was right, but it just didn't, it seemed like way too light. Okay, and then it has there. I think that works. I think that pretty much does it for the roses. I'm really happy with how they turned out. So now I think I'm just going to go um, mix up a green. And we're going to add some of those details. So I'll rinse out, rinse out my brush and how I um, like to do it with uh, most of the flowers that we've been painting on these videos is that my backgrounds are generally a cooler kind of a thing, like a blue green or a blue or something like that. So I like to go much more warm with my greenery. So I think that just adds a lot of nice, um, adds a different side of the cool colors. Like you can have warm, <laughs> you can have cool colors with a, that lean warmer more towards the yellows. And then you can have cool colors that lean more towards the blue side. And so 
I'm gonna do yellow ochre. We'll put in a lot of yellow ochre because the phthalo green is really blue and it's very, um, very cool and dark. So that'll get us a little the right direction. And I feel like I'll start with this really nice dark color and then we'll add some lighter details. So I haven't thought too much about the, um, the whole stem structure of what's going on here. I don't think I want to do stems, like show stems for any of these, except for this bud. I might have a bit of a stem. And then actually, I think I might do some buds that are all closed up, which is uh, kind of fun. So a fun shape. So um, let's think. I might just have another one that's like a little bud here, maybe one or two. Um, so as I'm looking, it kind of uh, kind of has a little bit of a green bit here. Oops, let's get some more water mixed in with the green and we'll help it flow a bit better for these lines. And generally with leaves, I, I have thinner paint, whether by adding water or medium or whatever, um, helps helps the leaves come out smoother. Okay. Just kind of kind of go down and just hint at it going down. I think we need to develop it a ton more. And then I'm going to have maybe like a little, whoops, I didn't really want that to connect to the very end. So let's have it go down a bit further. And this will be my little bud. And I think the buds, they look like they have a little something there. And then they come up and have this fun little, actually, mm, I want it to be lower. I don't want it to go up quite that high. So that will be the bottom of the bud. And then we'll have this fun little pointy top. And they even have, um, it's like a bunch of little leaves <clears throat> all coming together. And I don't think they're leaves actually. I'm sure they have a a technical name, but it's almost like they have these little sides to them. Whoops. I think I want that one to go there. It's kind of fun. And then they can even have some little leaves coming off. So maybe actually let's try a leaf. I'm just gonna make some really basic leaves. My my sort of um I don't know, generic is a little bit of a weird name, but sort of the basic leaf shape I do is really similar to actual rose leaves. And so uh, there we go. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll add one right there. Okay, because I have an upward sort of um, direction going on with these leaves, I think I'm going to just go upward with all of the leaves in the picture so that I'm not having fighting directional things going on in the painting. So I'm going to have um, maybe a leaf there. And I don't really worry as much about the actual placement. I think it kind of depends on how particular how really distinctive the leaf is on a certain plant. Like um, rose leaves, when you just look at a rose bush, there's leaves everywhere, there's flowers everywhere. The leaves are not, um, like to get the, the point across that you have roses and rose leaves, you don't have to put the leaves in any super particular position. So I'm just gonna kinda tuck them all around. I felt like with the painting that we did yesterday of the Gerbera daisies, their leaves are super specific. They're like just at the bottom of the plant, right before, like right as the stem is going in to the ground. And um, they're like this weird lumpy <laughs> sort of a shape that's very um, distinctive. And so I wanted to get them a little bit more truer to life. But with roses, um, their bushes are just, they're full of this sort of general shape of leaves. And um, to get that point across, you don't have to position them super specifically. So, um, I feel like I almost want to see hmm, maybe this actually going a bit more like that. There, that kind of is a little bit more pleasing, I think. I don't want to 
put a ton because I love seeing the texture of the background there. So let's hint at one kind of going to the side. I was just hinting that the leaves are there, but they're not the focal point of the painting. I think I might have like a stem, a little bit of a stem and then a leaf. And that might be a little bit of a fun variation. And then these are like sort of coming off of the stem. There. I'm trying to think if I want any more. I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, as I say it, I'm doubting. Yeah, let's leave it at that. I think that's kind of um, pleasingly placed and we'll just leave it as hints. I don't think I want to put any more hints of roses either. I was kind of imagining like what if I put a couple more suggestions of petals, but I don't think that would do much for us. I think this is nice, so we're just going to leave it. So now I'm going to add some yellow and some ochre to my green. I think that's still a little chartreuse -y. so I'm going to do some white to soften it just a bit. Take the the vibrance of the color down just a little. I almost want it to be overwhelming. For some reason, I feel like this is a very calm, serene <laughs> sort of a thing going on here. Although these, these are not really calm flowers. They're pretty busy. Okay, I'm going to get a bit of water here. I'll just kind of add some little... highlights to the leaves here. That's kind of nice having some of the light green on its own. Okay, so for the little buds, I want to use the green to kind of help us see that it has those little leafy pieces to it. There. And that can have a little touch to it. I feel like this green got a, still a little on the intense yellowy side, so I think I want to make a bit more of a brown green and come back and add another layer to kind of subdue it. So I might just actually use my ochre with the color that's on my brush. Ooh, see, having a more kind of brown gold I think would be really... Oh yeah, that'd be really pretty. So I'll just bring some more of my ochre and swirl it around so that I have kind of a consistent color on my brush. We'll add a bit of water. I think that will add a nice warm, oh, nice warm tone. So I'm just going to stroke this over some of the areas of that green, that light green to kind of calm it down a little bit. Maybe actually... That's a nice color to kind of hint at some more greenery back there that isn't quite as dark and bold as the colors we were using before. So I like that. Yeah, and that can build up a bit more depth to just sort of say there's some leaves, but you're not really, you know, seeing any of the full shapes there. I kind of like that how it has different greens going on in that area. So I'm going to leave it and maybe a little something there, maybe like a little, a little bit more there. I 
I kind of like the idea of using this color for one more leaf. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Just a leaf shape out of this color. Ooh, I kind of want to do that somewhere else. Maybe I'll do one right here. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I am pleased. <laughs> I think maybe I'll do one more right there. Cool. I think that really fills it out, helps it um, feel like it's part of a plant and not just, um, you know, these blooms floating in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> there, I think we're done. Thanks so much for joining in, you guys. I will see you next time. Bye.